This is going to be Topic 6, Therapeutic Communications. And after completion of this chapter, you, should, you will understand the process of effective communication, cultural competence when serving others, definitions of space, common strategies for establishing patient rapport, and interview techniques for the paramedic. Therapeutic communications. Caregivers are aware of the limitations of medicine to cure disease and reduce suffering. Power of interpersonal communication as a therapeutic tool. And paramedics bring to the patient's bedside the power of touch and high technology. Human communications. People communicate through direct and indirect communications. Direct communications would be through speech. Indirect communications would be through written words. Messages must first be encoded, transmitted by the sender, received, and decoded by the receiver. So there is some interpretation on this communication. The process may ex experience transmitter failure, interference, and poor reception. Identifying and resolving problems before they occur improves the quality. So the message itself is encoded, and before conveying Assemble the message very carefully before you encode or start formulating this message. Transmission is the process of conveying the message. So do you have the ability then to transmit the message? And let's get this. So it is encoded. Think of what you're going to say. Transmitted. Spoken. Received, and this is a part of the problem. This is subjective whenever we receive. Reception of the message, uh, factors that would affect reception, uh, physical influences like pain, and then cultural influences, customs, and language barriers. And then once it's received, it needs to be decoded. Receiver's ability to understand the message, and this is based on intelligence, basic language knowledge, life experience, maturity. Patients may not understand medical ease, so please do not give them the what's wrong with them in $5 words. Try to break it down where it's very simple or any kind of medical conditions. Uh, feedback, a mechanism by which the paramedic can ensure that the message sent was the message received and decoded. And this is obtained by asking questions, active listening, and this would be on your part. Uh, body language, and, and it, we should, whenever we should do this, we should um, provide body language in a non-defensive posture. <clears throat> and we come up with a term here that the book talks about, and it's called hermeneutics. The, the key to successful interview is for the paramedic to put himself in the patient's situation with all the accompanying influences. So just try to always, my mother used to say this too, try to always walk a mile in someone else's shoes before casting a stone. So again, <clears throat> the sender, the message, was it received and was it decoded? Please get feedback from this so that you understand that your patient understands what you're saying. And this is figure 14.1 in your book, The Process of Communication. Feedback and hermeneutics. We talked about hermeneutics there just a little bit. We'll talk about it a little bit more. Feedback is obtained by asking questions. A mechanism by which the paramedic can ensure that the message was the message received and encoded. And this is obtained by asking questions, active listening, and your body language. And again, this is in a non-defensive posture. And then we have hermeneutics, which is essentially interpretation. The key to successful interview is for the paramedic to put himself in the patient's situation with all the accompanying influences. Improving communications. And this starts with awareness. Self-awareness is having a conscious understanding of one's life influences and prejudices. Now, everybody has prejudices. We should try every day to decrease our prejudices. And some of this is on education. If we are educated and understand things better, we have a better ability to common sense our way through problems. Um, physical being also, genetic makeup, culture also influences uh, prejudices. Ethnocentrism, and this is I am the center of my own galaxy. 
people view that their own culture practices and customs are superior and then overall education because we can generate even in our profession wives tales at the drop of a hat non-factual statements interviewing techniques patient communication goals the goal of every patient communication is to be complete clear concise courteous and cohesive estimate the degree of distress of one approaching reassure relief is coming if the patient is not in extreme distress start a conversation to figure out symptom pattern and to diagnose appropriately interviewing considerations now this is a pretty long list we're going to talk about each one of these and kind of define it for a second proxemics and proxemics are the physical distance between the paramedic and the patient and there are multiple spaces which we're going to talk about in the next slide <clears throat> intimate space personal space social space and public space now each one of these have a standardized um, distance between the paramedic and the actual person uh, next one would be kinesthetics kinesthetics my apologies the study of nonverbal behavior for communication and this concludes all bodily movement facial expressions posture gestures and so on compassionate touch uh, critical care units have shown that intracranial pressure, heart rate, and blood pressure can lower towards normal with compassionate touch. Therapeutic touch, the power of touch to heal. Intentional touching that mimics earlier life experiences and telegraphs reassurance, understanding, and caring to the patient. Now, compassionate touch is very simple. It doesn't have to be really touchy-feely or anything like that but just whenever you're assessing especially an older person it, just by touch alone you grab their hand and in, in, in a handshake position put your other hand on top of it and ask them how they're doing today what's going on today what's your past medical history that alone now not every patient is going to be touchy-feely but that alone can add comfort to the patient which reduces their overall stress if they're having an, a myocardial event that alone with some aspirin could have solved the trick right there they probably need repaired but that could be more healing and more therapeutic than anything else you do the hearing impaired uh, convey a message to a patient who is either hearing impaired or hard of hearing uh, first step in this is to kind of recognize that the patient is hard of hearing sometimes we don't really clue in on that up front um, if the patient's a lip reader, then you need to position yourself in front of them. Consider moving to a quiet area. Um, be conscious of the message being sent. Attempt to gain attention before speaking. Speak slower than normal. Avoid shouting. Repeat messages back. Interpreters may be used if necessary. Um, if the patient doesn't understand the message, repeat it or restate it in any form or fashion. Uh, introductions good thing to do um, very simply introduce yourself and your partner and your level of care that you're going to be given hello my name is Roy Smith I am a paramedic with such and such EMS service and I'm here to help questions selecting the correct questions now there's two types of questions here there's an open-ended question which gives them the full run of the field an open-ended question is something like this. So, what's going on today? That gives them full ability to take it from the left field to the right field to center field, anywhere they would like to take it. It's an open-ended question. Versus a closed-end question. Now, oftentimes, whenever we're in emergency, we kind of close in their questions a little bit. An example of this, sir, are you having any chest pain today? Or ma'am, are you having any chest pain today? Using proper tone. Be aware of voice inflection. If you have a booming voice, be aware of that as well. Encouraging behavior. Um, to facilitate dialogue, acknowledge patients' responses, whether they're verbal or nonverbal. Remain silent during painful disclosures. Share observations. Convey empathy. Clarify on anything that you're unclear on. And then summarize. This is proxemics illustrated. This is 14.2 in your book. Very simply, intimate space is going to be in the red. Personal space, up to four foot. And then social space.
Body language often speaks louder than words. And an example of this, this person here is all closed in and is turning away from the caregiver. Things to watch for. Not exactly an open person willing to answer questions. Paramedic's first opportunity for assessment is in the initial interview and through direct communication. All right, these are behaviors that are detrimental to dialogue or to communication. <clears throat> Some of those are included on the patient's behalf or in the patient, which are patient conduct. Uh, blocking behaviors or self-protective behaviors, um, they inhibit free dialogue at all. Denial, the patient may deny their feelings. Fear is a powerful feeling, which may spin somebody up very quickly. Uh, inappropriate sexual behavior is another one. Be very honest with your patient. State the boundaries. Be professional. Provide error, provider errors in interviewing. Uh, behaviors that are counterproductive to the task of gathering a patient history and maintaining a therapeutic communication. Examples of this would be the use of jargon. So if we broke out in 10 codes in the middle of communication with this patient, if we interrupted our patient very frequently, if we gave them false assurances, uh, giving any type of advice, be professional, be factual, but don't, if you're giving them a type of advice, an example of giving some advice that would not be really advice, I think today, sir, I can't kidnap you, but in my opinion, you would need to go to the emergency room to, need to get checked out. Now, some patients can be quite contrary whenever they need to go to the hospital. And then any type of why questions may be inflammatory. <clears throat> Statements by friends or family can offer information, but be skeptical. Very simply, that's third party. Even though they're in the same room, that's still third party. Special communication situations. Uh, examples of this, drugs and alcohol. Intoxicated patients are the deserving of care and may not be aware of the danger to their health. Do not moralize about their contact. Uh, recognize that they may have actual problems. Alternate medicine. Be aware people use all kinds of alternate medicine. You may encounter patients who have a lack of faith in Western medicine. They may already use alternate medicine or complementary medicine before calling EMS. Death and dying, whenever dealing with this, support the patient, family through therapeutic communications. Listen, be non judgmental. If the family is in denial, refocus on reality very gently. Uh, do not take displays of anger or criticism personally. They're just essentially in pain at that point. Be professional again. Conclusion. Paramedics are in many aspects taught to romance the technology. EMS is above all else a caring profession. Therapeutic communications can establish paramedics as professional in the minds of their patients, other healthcare team members, and the general public. And if you have any questions concerning this topic, feel free to contact me. My name is Roy Smith, Smith R at SamaritanEMSOK.com or 405-492-8243. Thank you.